Your music sucks and it doesn't have to. But here's the kicker. Mine does too. Welcome back to my page. My name is Avon Ray. I'm a producer for the PNW, and I'm so excited to have you here for this video on why your music sucks and what you can do to make it better. I just told you that your music sucks because I have been where you are. I have struggled over the computer hours trying to figure out what I can do to make my beats better. And, and many times I still have those struggles. If you are practicing daily or weekly, session after session, at the end, you feel like your beats are trash or boring, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the five methods that will make your beats more successful and target those weak areas that are holding your beats back. So the first thing that you are doing wrong is the arrangement. When you are making your arrangement, you are doing eight bar loops that go throughout the whole song. It is boring. Nobody wants to listen to the same piano chord, the same verse, the same chorus, and have it keep going. One of the things that you're doing wrong in the arrangement is that you don't know the AB structure and you don't know the rule of three. The rule of three is the rule that says that you don't have the same chords more than three times. When you have the same chords in a section, a verse, a chorus, a pre-chorus, more than three times, it's going to get boring. That doesn't mean that your chords need to be different all the time. It just can't be more than three. I apply that, I use that, I use the same chords for my intro and then my verse and then I move on to a different type of progression or chord arrangement for my chorus, my pre-chorus and then my bridge. Number two, you're not hitting the three sound frequencies that are most important. Those three sound frequencies are your low end, your high end and your mid range. I recently sent a song to a producer and she gave me some notes on it. And the first thing that she said, especially about my vocals, was that they weren't meeting the high range. You couldn't hear them and they couldn't stand out from the mix. So what she told me was to pitch them up and kind of make them have a sample R&B feel, which would also add to the song. In your songs, you are also doing the same thing. You don't have a bass guitar that's hitting your low frequencies well. You don't have a piano or a synth or another instrument that's hitting the mid range or the high end. And your song is getting muddy, it's getting confusing, and it's not unique. In order to make your song unique, you gotta hit all of those three frequencies and you gotta make sure that they all have room to work within each other. Number three, you have writer's block. I have writer's block. We have writer's block. Writer's block is when you don't have anywhere else to go. You have been working, maybe you've been making beats days in a row, and you just can't make a beat that sounds good to you. Well, here's the kicker. We are beginners. Our beats don't sound good anyways. Don't beat me up. Don't beat me up. But in about a year, we're going to be looking back at our beats and we're going to say, these sound trash as heck. So you might as well just make that weird beat and save it anyways for progress and growth. Another thing is, y'all are not using sound packs, y'all are not using loops, you're not using one shots. For most of us who are not professionals, we don't have to worry about being sued or worry about copyright issues or things like that, especially from copyright free loop packs. I'm going to give you two resources. The first is Cymatics. They have some great free loop packs that I love to use. If you're a hip hop producer, if you like R&B, if you like lo-fi, they got all of those things and they got great one shots that you can use for all of your purposes and needs. Unison MIDI Chord Pack. They are a little expensive, but one thing is that they always have deals going on. I got my Unison MIDI Pack for $17 because I signed up for their emails. I also use Labs, and Labs has some great free things from Spitfire Audio. They have an autograph piano that I use, they have a moon guitar, and so many other VSTs that are great and perfect for your musical needs. Y'all are not sampling your own work either. Recently, I just made a beat off of another beat that I had made. 
I turned my beat into a sample, sampled that beat, and it actually gave me a better beat than what I started off with. So you need to be sampling your beat. Bounce out those old projects. You're not going to copyright yourself unless you were already copywriting somebody else's stuff, okay? Use your beats and turn your beats into some cool things. Number four, y'all ain't practicing outside of audio music production, and let's get into it. I play the drums, I play the guitar, I play the piano. If you are not practicing outside of audio music production, your stuff, your skills, your ability to keep grinding and going is not going to get better and get good. You don't know music theory. I right now, I have a very limited knowledge of music theory. I know where C, D, F, G, A is on the piano, but I don't know where they are on the staff. That may not be important. You may be using the number system, but you don't know what a 251 is. You don't know what a 367, uh, 251 is. You don't know where that is on a piano. You don't know how to do that in all 12 keys of the piano, and I don't know how to do it either. So I'm not talking about you. I'm just telling you the truth. The resource that I use to learn music theory is actually Duolingo's free music theory course. It is only available on the phone. It is not available on the PC that I've seen, but one of the things is that it's helping me learn how to read notes on a staff and learn other things. It is a great resource. And last but not least, number five, you are underutilizing your DAW. You don't know how to use your DAW and it shows. It's taking you two, three hours to make a beat with only four instruments. It's taking you hours to figure out where the fade tool is, where the marquee tool is, where all of these other things are. You don't have hotkeys set up, or maybe you don't even know where the hotkeys are on your stuff. You don't know how to turn on your musical keyboard, so you can't even make beats mobily. You don't know your die. In order to remedy this, I'm going to put some of my favorite tutorials of my work flow getting faster videos. I'm going to do it for Ableton, FL Studio, Logic Pro, and GarageBand. This is going to hopefully help you take your music to the next level and take your workflow to the next level. And the thing is, I'm watching this stuff too, so then me and you can both get better at the same time, okay? So in conclusion, you guys, we got to get better. And our music sucks right now, but it doesn't have to suck for too long. That's what I wanted you all to know, okay? Please hit that subscribe button. Please comment for more. And so you can stay locked in with me. Follow me on all social media platforms so we can stay connected. Reach out to me. Hopefully, I'll get back to you. Um, you got my email as well if you want to ever collab. Um, but our music doesn't have to suck. We can do better, okay? Let's get it, y'all. Bye.